Good day, y'all. We're servicing a Cane Creek double barrel inline today from circa 2014 or something. We already took the adjustments and pressure. So we'll just get into it. Uh, release this air pressure. Boom. Sir clip. Don't lose it. That's that. Custom tool from eBay. Don't know who the seller is, I forget. But it's it's a good tool. We're fine. Now this is an eight millimeter shaft over here. Shaft clamp the crap out of it. So there's a bottom out washer, bottom out bumper, o-ring, and then that's the eyelet, boom. T15 Torx is up next. Nope. T10. My bad. It's a bit tiny. T15 is the regular double barrel, not the inline. Maybe. Let me see it. Okay, so this air piston comes off. These three screws. And then, boom, air piston, air cap. So this is the damper now. Aeration central, sag indicator. Very nice. Okay. I'm gonna spray it down a little bit. Just to clean it. Right, just, just cleaning at the base of this shock body. So when it comes off, Dirt doesn't fall in the shock. Uh, IFP inflation tool or 
I should bladder inflation um, port. That's it. Well, looks like it's still pressurized, maybe. So. That should be good. Beautiful. Yeah, that should be good. This part, I just use part tool pin spanner, SBA number two, SBA dash two. do an experiment for y'all. Olin's TTX seal head tool. Does it work? No. Looks similar. Doesn't work. So don't try it. Snap ring pliers over there too. Crazy. Need to heat gun this one. crazy oh, it'll break okay we need to find a we need to find a different tool a BRB okay so the cameraman helped me get this uh, also the heat the heat it loosened up. Not bad, actually. It wasn't me. Oh, ho, she's she's a bubbly. She's a bubbler. I'll tell you that much. Oh yes, please. What an honor. Well, she was a bubbly, but she came apart. At this point, shock body can separate from the... She's a little stuck. Shock body can separate from the seal head. Because the seal head actually threads into the inner tube. Shock body is sandwiched between. Um, I'll try to remove this inner tube. Not like that. I like to clamp it actually. Fox Sports number two shaft clamp set. Second to largest hole, I think. Yeah, works well.
So this eyelet has a bladder inside. Uh, it doesn't normally fail. So I always assume that it doesn't, it didn't fail. Which I'm gonna do right now also. So the shock has been taken apart and we can replace the seals now. Okay, so replacing the seals is next. We're gonna use the MTB Hydraulics uh, Cane Creek Double Barrel Inline Air Full Service Kit. This one uh, is available on mtb-hydraulics.com. Good kit. Um, has everything we need. Also, some inline shocks have the upgraded air piston, which is purple. This one is red. This is the stock one from 2014 and the following few years. And this kit has the seals for both pistons. How convenient because the seals are different. Backup rings, we're not gonna replace. These, these, are, these we're not gonna replace. These are actually custom. So, yeah. Let's pick this off. Clean it up. Also, there are three seals. They look similar. Well, they are the same. They are identical. Sag indicator, air piston inner seal, and eyelet to shock body seal. So, that's that. I'm just gonna wipe off these backup rings, L rings, L whatever they are. Throw it back on. Boom. That's that. Seal head. Uh, the seal head seals are also, uh, there are two options included in the kit because the seal head is also upgraded with the, with the air piston. Just digging into this seal with my pick. Boom. The seal is, or sorry, the backup ring, the white ring is on this side of the seal head. So it's the low pressure side. I'm not gonna replace it, but if you want to replace it, it's a good idea to put a slit with an X-Acto knife. Where is it? with an exacto knife it goes in easier if you put a slit on it like that like that boom well you know what i'm gonna replace it just just for fun Oh, this one didn't even have a slip, but it goes in easier with the slit. Boom.
like to use something flat, like an Allen key, kind of push this thing in position. Okay, use the shaft a little bit. Okay, so that's good. I'm gonna wipe off the old oil, the shaft and the piston. Clears out the, the little openings from the piston and wiggle this thing in place. Well, actually, let me double check. All looks good. Wiggle this thing in place. And this, the thread seal, I'm going to replace. I really don't need to, but I'm replacing it because I can. It's that one. Boom. Wipe out the air can. Nice and good. Boom. I'm going to wipe this inner tube. This one had red Loctite on it, on the threads. I'm not going to put anything on there. I don't find that it comes loose. Shock body, wipage. The shock body has one side chamfered on the outside, one side on the inside. So the outside chamfer goes in towards the eyelet makes sense and then the inside chamfer that's where the, the seal head sits okay so take out this seal from the base of the eyelet wipe it out Boom. Um, I'm going to take off the climb switch. 1.5 millimeter Allen key. That's a long bolt. Boom. Clean it. Um, so we'll replace these adjuster seals, except for the rebound, low speed rebound adjuster. I find there's a circlip that limits it, the adjuster needle from coming out. And I find that circlip deforms every time that you take it out. I don't have a replacement, so I'm just not going to replace it because I value the function of the circlip and it's not leaking. I'm going to use these dental picks to take take out this clip. This is the high speed rebound adjuster. Comes right out. Kind of, in theory, okay, nice and oily, take the seal off of it, wipe the thing,
put it back. And then put the circlet back in place. Don't lose it. Boom. And then wind the adjuster all the way out. Boom. I'm going to do the same for the high speed compression. Dental pick. Boom. Also, ah. So what I said about the air can coming in half, that was brain dead. That's on the regular cane creeks, not the not or the, the regular double barrels, not the inline. This is a one piece, I think. So my bad. My bad. Okay. This comes out. Not bad, y'all. Not bad about that. Fake information. Giving me fake information. I mean, all these adjusters, they don't tend to leak, so. But if it was my shock, and it was in better shape than this, I wouldn't even replace any of it. But while I'm at it, I'm going to clear out the old oil. Okay, that's good. Now, we'll take out the low speed compression needle. I like to have my finger around the needle. Because beaten balls can go flying sometimes. Not today. So there's a spring and two beaten balls on this one. Uh, there are two o-rings that are the same size so those are the high or sorry low speed compression and rebound adjust their o-rings now i replaced that so i put on grease to stick the beaten spring end balls onto this adjuster And then shove it back in place. Boom. Now we'll take out the adjuster itself or the lockout lever. Another 1.5 or 1 1.5 millimeter Allen. So we'll take that out and Okay, so you need to kind of 
there, this is the detent, so you need to push that in through here so that you can pull out the we'll turn this adjuster. Boom. Also, this piece of plastic you need to pry off. The bleed screw is over here. So, clean this, clean this out a little more. I always orient the things this way so the dirt doesn't fall in falls out. Of the small O-rings, the biggest one goes on the lockout lever, or adjuster. Boom. Okay, so the detent goes back in its place. Oh. Don't drop it. Don't drop it. It'll shoot out and you'll drop it. It's not good. <laughs> Bit of a fight with this detent. I'm in fact stuck at the moment. There's a tiny protrude, a tiny uh, hole on this, and you can use a very fine pick. You know what? I'm just gonna tighten this all the way, and then come back out, and then put the detent in place. It's been a while. Forget about these tricks. Forgot about these tricks. Okay, so I went all the way in and just got what, 90 degrees out and that's the position for that. So, we'll put this in. This tiny screw. You don't want to go all the way in. Sorry, you do. You do. 
Okay, anyway, that's done. Clean the adjuster. Boom. You know what? I'm going to leave the adjuster off. I'm going to clean this weed port cover. I'm going to leave the adjuster off until the last step. Okay, so that's good. The eyelet's done. Um, take it a while. Taking a while at it. That's why we charge the big bucks for these jobs. She takes a while. I, 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 I heard they charge three to four hundred bucks an hour or something. No. They don't. They definitely don't. So I'm doing them, but move on to the air can now. Thing is filthy, as expected. Haven't touched it since 2014, probably. I'm wiping out the grooves here. Again, we're not replacing these backup rings. They're fine. They're fine. They're fine. The orientation of these is important. The this ledge that extends past the seal groove. So this will or oh, sorry, the yeah, the the lower part of this so this will go into the lower part of the seal groove like that. I mean, there's only one way to make them fit, but I'm sure some people would mess it up. And then this one in this orientation, make sure the the slit at the end overlaps the way it should, the way it lines up. Okay, so these are extras. These, are, this one is for here, and then this one is for the eyelid. And the rest of these are extras for sag. Oh, sorry, that's sag indicator. That's bottom up bumper. These are extras for the upgraded upgraded seal head and air piston. And that one is for the rebound, a low speed rebound adjuster, which we didn't replace. So that's it. That's it, y'all. Time to fill her up. Mm -hmm.
Okay, so we're gonna fill this up with oil. Oil, our favorite. We'll thread this in. Double check the seals in place for that. Okay, thread this in. Okay. So the chamfered outside goes down. Boom. Pops into place. And now we grab our four weight Motorex slash Fox oil. So, we'll fill this up to the brim and then put a rubber glove over it and side pull it. This will push oil through the valving and all that and the bladder and we'll get some air out of this. Not bad, not bad. Once you can no longer hear air, so when you know it's good, it also gets a lot stiffer. Make sure the lockout adjuster is on the Compression adjuster, I could undo a bit more, but also the lockout. Okay, it should be good enough. Now, that is actually a decent way to bleed this thing. But I'm a perfectionist, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you. So this is the piston, just fill up these holes with oil, have this full after the cycling with the glove, skim off the air bubbles from the top, make sure it's clean. And boom, that's it. And that's a decent bleed. That's a decent bleed just by, just an assembly bleed. It's quite decent. However, I don't take chances with this. I'm a professional, so I don't take chances. But if you're doing this for yourself, and you don't want to buy the bleed fitting, well, you might be okay. Okay. So I just tightened that up. Uh, this is the MTV hydraulic syringe and then a, a mess of a bleed fitting, really. But we'll see if any more air comes out of this. And you can make your own decision for how you want to do your shock. So I'm just kind of putting this in there, 
leaf port. Actually, no. Put the leaf port at the highest point, like that. Holy smokes, lots of air came out. So there you go. Might be it might be better now. We'll see. It's a bit of a Yeah, the bleed's no good. We need the syringe. We need the syringe methodology. Well, I'm gonna flip this around so it's easier to see. Oops, my syringe is leaking. Piece of crap. Contraption. <laughs> this contraption is. needs a bit of an overhaul. That's gonna be after this service is done. And the next. We have a King Creek inline coil after this. Busy day. Busy day at the shop. So now it's. Oh, and then it's a good idea to reorient this. The air bubbles rise, rise up, and oh, not like that. Mm. Still some air in here. The syringe is, is a piece of crap, but leaking out of there. It's true. Okay, we need to examine this. False alarm. The cameraman <laughs> saw a leak, but it's actually the syringe draining down and then onto, onto the shock. You know, I always say, focus on your job. <laughs> Mind your own business. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just mindlessly cycling this at this point. It's pretty good. Pretty good. It's nice and quiet. That's what you're looking for. Quiet, unlike your camera, man. Yes.
Okay, so that's good. Nice and good. So I'm gonna make this set this horizontal, unthread this. this contraption plug this free port snug this thing out that's isopropyl alcohol in case you're wondering Ooh, boy. plastic cover is a challenge to install But you get clearance for it in the climb climb position. I forget these little nuances of this shock. Haven't done one in ages. So that's that. Boom. Boom. Oh, my God. Brain dead. Need to inflate it. Need to inflate the bladder. So, I'm gonna use the Fox pellet retainer tool. In fact, do it like that. We're using 170 psi for the IFP or bladder pressure. 10 to 12 bar is the spec from OEM. Good friends at OEM, our good friends at CC. She's going in. Ooh, ho, 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 ho. Holy smokes. Noob noobing out on this one. Call it Nuke TV around here. Reality TV show called Nuke TV. So let's check. I reckon she's good. Compression adjuster. Always make sure it can use full travel. Climb switch. Nice. Good. Thank goodness. 
needle is only half broken. Okay, so we'll install the air can. Yeah, just angle it on, wiggle it. Oh, sorry, we'll need the sag indicator first. My apologies. Okay, that's good. Also, I didn't explicitly say, but we tightened down this, the gas pellet retainer. Four millimeter Allen key for that one. into place T10 you gotta align this so the air piston is over the threaded holes I'm just gonna go screwdriver tight on these. It's still tight. Don't worry, it's still tight. Bottom out bumper, bottom out washer, and eyelet. about that moving out 7 p.m. long day long day it fell in plastic by the way it's always scary when the thing falls on concrete dents these uh, aluminum parts really easily. By the way, these are 8 millimeter shaft clamps. These are Olin's ones, but the Fox Forks number 2 also has 8 millimeter clamps. So, using just that will be sufficient for this service. Just snug, you don't want to break the shaft. All these parts are aluminum, easy to break. Some air can lubricant. This one is the Olin's air can lubricant. Doesn't really matter, just use any thick oil. I added about three milliliters.
good. to get it over the seal on this one. Okay. Boom. And then put the circlip in place. And it can be inflated. Good enough. For now, we'll inflate it and equalize it in the bike. So, just gonna spray her. I'm gonna clean out this tool interface also a bit better. Boom. I'll put the valve cap on for now. And a quick wipe. That's that, that's it, that's it.